Hi, I'm Alice. Hi, I'm Justin. And you're listening to the Otterly Allison Podcast. Who knows what we'll talk about. <laughs> okay, now what am I supposed to be? Oh my god, it's happening again. It's fine. I put my Santas up. Am I... On the couch? It looks like a gnome hat. Oh, I see the Santas up there. Santas. Gnomes. We were watching something the other day, and there was a guy, it was like an old-timey movie, and there was a guy sleeping with a stocking on, and I was like, did people really sleep with stockings on, for real? What's up, David? What's going on? I was showing him my... (laughs) The the very vintage-looking collection of... uh, (laughs) My grandmother cross-stitched those. Oh, Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. That is we very decorate. cool. Well, welcome, David, to uh, the Otterly Allison podcast, also known as Toop. Toop. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one to me, but thank you very much for for having me here. This is this is a privilege. <laughs> Absolutely, you you passed the test of whether you're listening to the podcast or not. <laughs> I I only had a little help on that one, but yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would have seen it at some point, but it probably would have been uh, a little bit delayed. So I was very excited to to kind of, you know, get that little nugget. I think that's a good idea, you know, for, for future guests. You guys are on to something. You can play this one at your Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> now, do you watch or do you listen, David? Uh, I'll always go through YouTube, but I usually have it in the background, so I'm not always seeing the videos, but, uh, but yeah, technically I think that's a watch. Counts, counts as a watch. If you watch, you gotta be careful, because Allison loves to screen share, because she likes seeing me squirm for editing, so. (laughs) (laughs) David needs to do an intro. Oh yeah, sorry, I just jumped right into it. Uh, You know, we're all friends here, but yeah, we should probably get an introduction. Allison, go ahead. Why am I always the introducer? I think you need to... Because I've been talking too much already. <laughs> well, David, introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for, for having me on. My name is David Shake. Uh, I'm very fortunate to know both of you from working together at Cross Views. Uh, I've been doing the ServiceNow consulting uh, gig for about five years now, which is crazy to, to think about. But... Uh, came into this world uh, from managed print services. So it was a lot more exciting to, you know, get away from uh, printers and copiers and and services of of that nature and get into a a world that was growing with, you know, a lot of new cool things that expands and all the fun that we have. So I made that switch over and haven't looked back. I don't plan on looking back from there. And it's been great. Because I get to meet very smart people like each of you and brag about, uh, you know, what I what I get to do and something that's growing. So, I love it. My hearts aren't working. Your hearts aren't working. Your heart's broken, Allison. There you go. Is is that a? Do you have to set that up? I don't have it set up. Or no, is it in the, the studio? Lasers are the best ones. Do you have a Mac, David? I I so I do, but I'm not on it right now. Yeah, this is a Mac feature. What was okay. that, Allison? I hadn't I seen that know. before. I thought it was going to like do the lasers. And I just like... The lasers have changed? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, my laser works differently than your laser. Like Yours looks like you've got, like, Allison, that's like a... I don't, I don't even know what that is. That's it's like, like a wormhole a... opening in our head. <laughs> <laughs> a wormhole right. is a... I mean, it's a space terminology, Allison. <laughs> fine. David, I didn't know your background was managed print services. Oh, yeah. I learned yeah. something today. Interesting. Yeah. Are you I, excited uh, for the Eagles game tonight? Oh. For, for me? Aren't the Eagles playing tonight? It, it Yes, but that is also not the Eagles from... I get uh, this a lot, by the way, and I've been meaning to change it because everybody's like, oh, that's, that's the football team. And I'm like, no, that was my university's logo. Well, they look... They basically took the same, changed the colors, and you can't really, that doesn't come through here. I also think ours is flipped the other direction, but I'm not 100% positive on that. Copyright laws, you know. <laughs> yeah. That was my high school mascot, so I get it. Was it the Eagles? Eagles, yeah. 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 Not mine. 
Yours were the sand, some, sand fleas? Sand dites. Sand dites, yes. Sand, sand fleas. <laughs> no, that's a sand mite. We've had the <laughs> podcast. I know, I only remember the good bits. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the important bits. <laughs> So David is a client lead, mm-hmm. and he's like an EM on steroids. Who yeah. I've, I've gotten to work with quite a bit, actually, compared to other uh, client leads. Um, one who still needs to be a guest, by the way, Allison. The other oh, one. Oh yeah, our next know. invitee. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah, I've actually had a, a, all good experiences, David, working with you. So. That's good. That's good. Remind me to, you know, give you that 20 next time I see you, Justin. <laughs> Wait, you mean 20 or 200? I, what do you mean? That, oh, yeah. One, one of the two. Yeah. I've got a podcast, man. You can't get me for less than a bill. Or <laughs> David and me got stuck on a call. Was it Friday? It was, it was a challenging one. Or was Sometimes. It <laughs> that call was rough, but... You know, it's funny, Friday, I was talking to the other David, David, uh, Allison's David. Mm -hmm. And that's about the time you messaged that you were in on the podcast. (laughs) And all I see on my right screen is Allison, David, comma, that's it. And so I'm like, is David seriously sending me messages while I'm talking to him about this serious topic? And so I'm like, like, should I say anything to him? And this, and so I don't say anything. And luckily I didn't because I get offline and I look at it. Oh, it's David Shake, not David Allen. Yeah. <laughs> you can't even do the SH. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful when those pop up. But uh, yeah, I know it's David's awesome. I mean, we all know that he's, he's great. There's, there's <laughs> that's what I like so much about the, the client lead role though, too, because I do think I'd get to work Justin with, you know, yourself and your team, um, David included a lot more, I think up front because, you know, so much of what we get to do expands beyond just that of executing a project. It's really, you know, stepping into solutions and has that sales side of it. And really, I think that's so, my favorite thing about it is it's so valuable to be able to give the input that you have from a much broader lens of the folks that are using what we're implementing, right? Because so much of sales is conceptual, ideal dream state type stuff. But then, you know, as a client lead, you get to bring in some of the hey, here's where you're really at, even if you think you're over here. And as a result, I think the best way to make this happen is to kind of step into it. Um, and it's fun because then I can give all that feedback and then, you know, Justin give you, I feel like more context that helps you design better solutions that ultimately hopefully customers can use and like a lot better and then keep working with us. And then we see that grow over time and make all the cool stuff that is possible a reality because oftentimes so many, so many customers, I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Like they want to do all these cool things, but the reality is they're like not even on the bottom rung of the ladder. And in order to do the super cool stuff, like you have to have that foundation in place. And, uh, you know, from my perspective, I get to see how big of a gap that actually is and then help kind of close it down saying like, I know they're saying they want this, but they're not even a foot in the door yet to that arena. And they're trying to build a second arena. (laughs) And don't you miss project work? I, you know, I do and I don't. So I I love my role in that. You, like you said, David, I get to stay in that kind of ideal realm. And we, we try to do a good job of tempering expectations because sometimes like, just imagine what you hear. Imagine what we hear before we've kind of toned it down a little bit. Like it's, sometimes it's a bit crazy. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I miss it and don't miss it, I guess, Allison. To be <laughs> I, I could do, I could, I could live in both worlds, honestly, in, in the ideal circumstances. Yeah. Allison's thinking even more so after that call we were on Friday, like doesn't everybody miss this side of it? Yeah. <laughs> There's a there's another podcast, um, CJ and the Duke. I don't know if mm-hmm. either of you listen to it. Uh, I, I, I listen to it. I like it. There was a CMA on last week. Um, I, she was part of the original cohort, Allison. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know her name. Arlene. Yeah. Arlene? Okay. And she t- was talking about this kind of thing, about 
how sales has like a couple encounters with a customer but the delivery team has much more time and they get you get different stakeholders and people to talk to and so the information download uh discrepancy between the sales side of things and delivery is huge right so there's like you're finding out details that we had no idea even existed or 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 even stakeholders that we didn't know existed or whole departments or departments yeah yeah. Yeah. oh is that what happened friday (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, divisions all that stuff and it's funny too because it changes right these things fluctuate and then we find out about them sometimes like as they're changing so you know my favorite is always the um situation where there's like different stakeholders that are m- might be switching and then you kind of see like power struggles and you're just kind of like stuck in the middle of it trying to be like listen we gotta make a decision now but then you also have to be sensitive to what you know your customers organizations going through and that can pose both a lot of headaches but also you know it's a cool thing to to kind of get to be a part of and see because I feel like in a short amount of time I've seen so many different situations you know that one could be in in a point in time in a career or working with large enterprise you know global groups um, because these things happen so fluidly and they happen so quickly now, right and being in the consulting world you can see that and understand people's decisions influence it a little bit that's the fun part of being in that but the headache side of it is the hey we're really trying to get through and accomplish something and you know you're worried about what person x is thinking and they're talking crap about you to person y and then all that drama that comes with it but... so are you saying david that requirements change in the middle of a project it's crazy yeah. isn't it yeah. it's, it's nuts <laughs> It was a water break. Allison, you were supposed to fill in the gap while okay. we drank water. <laughs> I would say our customers at least love when we tell stories about other customers. Like it, one, instills confidence, but two, it makes them not feel so bad. There's worse, worse customers true. than me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. My favorite's always when they try and say, you know, they compare themselves to what they think is out there. Uh, yeah. And then hear their, pers- you know, perspective of how they think they're doing. Um, usually I find customers are always doing way better than they think they actually are, but it's funny to hear how bad sometimes they yeah. think they actually are doing. And then they're like, you have no idea. <laughs> like, yeah. You're a cakewalk compared. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes I think they're like challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, David, coming from outside of service now. And when you get a project handed to you, so you're, you're sight unseen, most yeah. of the time, maybe you've seen it in some of the cases, is there a particular part of service now that you get more excited about uh, being a part of than another part? Uh, there's parts that I get le- less excited about. <laughs> I don't know if there's any. Well, please, I want to know that one. Excited. Yes, that's a great part. That's a great conversion of the question. Yes. <laughs> yeah, What's your yeah. least favorite part of service now? Um, I think right now, probably just SPM because so many, not, not from a service now perspective, I see your face, like, how can you say that? And more, yeah, <laughs> more from, uh, customers, uh, processes, right? So I don't think customers have at this point in time, usually a good vision of what their process should be end to end. And SPM is one of those where you really kind of get the most out of it when your process is rock solid, right? So we spend a lot of time, like if I get SPM, I know usually typically there's gonna be a lot of time going through process questions. And there's so many things that if they understood that more upfront, um, they could get out of the blocks so much faster and start using it to really help them. But there kind of is this ground zero with SPM that's I'm finding to be a, a very, just bang your head against the wall place, right? <laughs> right? Whereas like, you know, if you're jumping into, you know, uh, ITSM and there's so many out of the box things that you can leverage like right off the bat that immediately catapult you know, value back that they can go brag about, whether it be the dashboards, all that stuff, you know? We have another special guest. Yeah. David, have you met Rory? <laughs> I have not. Mm, this is Adorable. Rory the Irish Beetle. 
<laughs> we think Adorable. she's so tiny, so. <laughs> she's I'll hold on that scene where I can't see her face. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, it does look, yeah. Unless the eyes are showing, it's yeah. it's just one camouflage black yeah. blur. Yeah. No, she's eight months old, so. Oh, nice. God, yeah. very new. I believe it's only eight months. She's mm -hmm. huge. I know, she's, she's bigger than Riley now. Just imagine, not as she needs to put some more meat on her bones, but other than that. Can you imagine if your kids grew that fast? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, SPM, the other thing is like, it seems like every company has like 14 different project management processes and they want them to be able to keep all of them. Yep. <laughs> yep. Every department, every group has their own way of managing a project, yeah. yeah. That's usually politics too, right? It's usually like whoever whoever runs the project is basically in control. It's a yeah. power thing. And then so therefore, in order for me to exert the most power or most influence in the organization, mm -hmm. I need to retain control of that project process. I get that. Yep. But yeah, yeah for implementation. <laughs> yeah. Especially <laughs> trying to find that starting point. Because everyone wants to compete for the first version because they know that that's the one that will get replicated by other groups down the line. Um, if you do have that situation where there's multiple folks, so it's like, it can get real tense really quick. And you're like, just trying to just be like, let's just start here and then worry about where we take it. But yeah. yeah. Allison, every time you nod your head, your whole screen moves. I know. I realized my desk was a little like if I'm sitting on it and do it. Otherwise, I have to like. <laughs> well, this is gonna be really challenging packets. at it because I got like full chest from David and Justin and like barely under Allison's. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to be nice <laughs> Oh, because you want the Christmas stuff to show. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, well, I will edit that out. I guess <laughs> we have to be festive. <laughs> All my Although festivities is... are hidden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about that, Allison, because I'm a very big, you don't put a single Christmas thing up until the day after Thanksgiving, but I'm getting, I'm finding more and more people disagree with me on that. Well, I do not judge anyone on what brings them joy and this <laughs> brings them joy. So therefore, I will still decorate for Christmas. <laughs> yes, that's that's more what I'm learning. And the, uh, we don't put response. Thanksgiving here, so... You know, the turkey doesn't need his day in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Our living room, it's like Christmas threw up, so. <laughs> now, last year, Allison, know. your front porch had a bunch of Christmas stuff on it. Oh, yeah, that, that's next weekend when we get home, the outside stuff is. So. We bought a deer family at Sam's <laughs> this weekend. It's awesome. Is it one you know, like the light-up ones? ones? I bought real wine this weekend as a celebration. So I drank real wine and not box wine. Oh, I was like, what is she talking about real wine? <laughs> <laughs> Did you pour it into the redispensable box that you sent me? No, I bought bottled wine. I know, but you could pour it into those. No, I didn't buy one of those. They were like $80. She sent me David on. It was a TikTok, or yeah, it's like these little prefab boxes to make your wine box wine look prettier. Looks what? Nice. <laughs> That's funny. I've not, I've got to look that up. That uh, seems... I'm sure I still have it saved. <laughs> but so do you just take the bag that like the box like it's in, and then you put the bag in there, or do you put the whole box in this like this, I like, think double box the bag in it. If I, I think it's the bag. Right. Yeah. The bag, yeah. Hold on, I bet I can Google it. Here's the screen share coming, David. I told you. I know. <laughs> now, David, are you box or bottle? Oh, definitely bottle. But I learned from we were at, we were at dinner with um, with Chris, and he had the best. So Allison was like, I typically drink, you know, box wine, and I was expecting Chris, who's a big wine guy, Chris Howard, the big wine guy. And he, I thought he was going to be like, oh, but he was so cool about it. He's like, if that's what you like, that's what wine's all about. There's nothing wrong. It comes in a box. It's kind of like putting up your Christmas decorations early. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever brings you joy. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've, I've backed off the wine personally because I don't know, David, if you heard or saw that podcast where I, um, it was the end of the bag. 
And so I was like, well, let me just finish this. And it ended up being like a whole other glass, like a whole like red cup, solo <laughs> cup glass. Yeah. yeah. So that hangover was enough to hangover deter me for a while. That headache will do it. Look at that. Yeah. They have different style. That one's not really my speed. That is pricey cool. though. I know. I was like, I. but then when I Googled it, I actually found quite a few other ones that I hadn't seen before. Like this one's only 13 bucks. You should check Walmart. Yeah, I have my Walmart Plus, so. That's very fun. I like that wood one on the right. This one. I guess you can't see my mouse. The walnut. Yeah. That would look good in my office. And then get one of those yeah. right over there. Get a clear <laughs> wine, call it water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my okay. box wine. But now I bought bottles because it was a celebration. That's... Did you do the little, like, buy six and get 20% off kind of thing? <laughs> That's it. Fresh market, and it's buy four, get 10% off. How did I know? It was at Target, and I used my Target Circle coupon. So. Target Circle? Wow. Oh, because it's a circle on the Target thing? Yeah. I don't, that, I don't and... shop at Target, so you have to. Oh, not sure bad. Well, it's, like, across town, and it's on a hill, and, you know. It's on a hill? <laughs> It's out of it's out of the way. It's like, like if if there's a gradient above two percent, I'm out. <laughs> the gradient you got to pass a Michaels and a you know a, a furniture store, and then there's Target right in front of a movie theater. So. Do you have a Hobby Lobby? <laughs> yes, that's actually closer. Yep. I love Hobby Lobby too. That's I've a good store. Yeah. So, David, we have one really important question for you. Yes. What is your spirit animal? My spirit animal. <laughs> I feel like I should have came prepared with well, this. Well, there's one on your move, wall. Yeah, move I your camera know. to the I have, right. I have a lot of buffalo. Like, I don't know if you can see. Like, like all throughout my house. So I would probably... It'd be easy to say, like, it's a buffalo. But I don't even... You know what? Speaking of, like, Hobby Lobby, they decided, like, they were just going to put all this Southwest theme stuff mm -hmm. everywhere it became like a trend and for whatever reason i was like oh buffalo are super super cool so i've got one there i've got one there i've got like buffalo statues downstairs <laughs> um i'll just like it for no reason i wish i had a good story like like some people are like oh did you go on like an expedition or whatever you know take 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 a picture of it did you do any of that i'm like i wish but no, you should just just, start saying yes and change I, the story. You need to come up with a good story that was like, oh yeah, I was on a safari or, you know, something. But Do you love chicken wings? I, like, I don't hate them, <laughs> but, but no, that would be a I good tried. one too. I tried. Like, I tried. Love, I love wings. My wife is obsessed with Buffalo Wild Wings, so maybe that's where it all started. But, yeah. My son's nursery was Buffalo Check Everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. Then, like, yeah, just buffalo check. And... <laughs> What's check mean? <laughs> buffalo check. It's like that red and black check or the white and black check design. Check. Well, if I share my screen again, you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> you add ten minutes to editing every time you do that. <laughs> well, I gotta what? reposition it. I gotta zoom in. I gotta put buffalo. a border around it. Yeah. <laughs> All this work. I don't mind. I don't mind. It's part of the job. And if it wasn't going to be a buffalo, I, would, I guess an eagle would be an easy one, too. Buffalo check. Yeah. It's called buffalo check? Interesting. Yeah. I, didn't never, I never knew that. Or buffalo plaid, whatever I say check. But... I should have asked ChatGPT. He would have told me. The real small ones, like if you're ever like on a video call and someone's got that as like a shirt pattern... Uh, my screen goes crazy. Like my eyes, it just looks like like they're just like moving. I can't. I hate that pattern on like certain webcams and shirts. Uh, in fact, I was on a call early last week. There were four four people all in like the same exact small shirt like wow. pattern, checkered pattern. And I, I, like, like, <laughs> I, I had to like. I just had to minimize the the whole video chat because wow. like my eyes were. We're, we're geeking out over it. Rory just ate a Christmas decoration. <laughs> Oops. She seems now, pretty destructive lately. 
You're not wrong. Well, you already ate it, so I guess it's worse now, so. Is she still teething? Like, is it... I don't, so, has David, my David, told you about the backyard situation? He had some words that I won't repeat on the podcast. So, I go to Lowe's, <laughs> or Home Depot, one of them, to find, I was gonna get, like, the mesh fence thing, you know? Ticket wire. Yeah, but it was, like, the plastic kind. Oh, like, but. Yeah. I don't know what that's called. So I go to get it. And of course I'm frugal. So I'm like, this is too expensive. Well, they had like the construction grade, like, I don't, I'll have to take a picture and send it to you guys. But like, it was so much cheaper. And so now our backyard looks like a crime scene <laughs> because we have like this roadblock <laughs> section where it looks like we're excavating and we're not. But she is and that's like- just dumb. for the dogs? Well, no, there's this one area that she just keeps digging in. Oh. And so we were trying to like rope it off. So she stopped, <laughs> like it was, this hole was humongous. She almost tunneled underneath our air conditioner that we like had to go rock the area. I wonder busy. if there's like a dead body in your yard or something. Well, now I can't <laughs> not think that. Allison's not going to sleep all week. She, she's got a good nose. I mean, my mother in law has a random headstone in her backyard that she found one day. No. <laughs> you got to find the headstone, then you'll know where the body is. Well, it's bad, though, because we have a sprinkler system, and I'm worried she's going to, like, dig and, you know, mess that up. Get into that. Yeah. Yeah. My money's on a body, or, or like, there's a. What do you, what are the things I was complaining about, Allison? The moles, the voles, and moles. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing we bought her like a busy mat, you know, where you hide treats in it, yeah. thinking she's just bored. Yeah. Nope. Riley takes the busy mat and just shakes all the treats out of it. And puts <laughs> back down. That's a smart dog. Yeah. We've been so. using towels. We just, my wife and I got uh, a mini golden doodle uh, about five weeks ago, but oh um, we hit like a cheat code when it comes to, you know, these, I think yeah. getting a dog because uh, her name's Ruby. She just turned 11 months. So she, we got her and she was 10 months old. So all, like she was already for the most part, like, trained with basic commands, house training, all that, but she's still at 10 months, you're, you're, you're very hyper and, you know, chewing things. Um, and thankfully she didn't, you know, she doesn't like, she knows what her toys are and what aren't toys for the most part, I should yeah. say. Um, there's a, a few things I have in my office that like, if I'm not paying enough attention to her, she mistakes them for, for toys and will just chew them to shreds. But, uh, this, this, uh, what was it? This morning, it was like a murder scene. <laughs> All of her soft toys, she finally got to the stuffing. And just, I mean, it was yeah. it was chaos ever. I thought she got into like a like a pillow. I'm like, oh, my wife's going to be so pissed. And then I realized they were just her toys. But she like took the face off of this fox <laughs> and a face off of this other little like mini golden doodle kind of toy that she has. Just everywhere. Like my, my garbage bin right now is here. This is... It's just all stuffing. I don't know if you can see. This is this is just everywhere, all over my house. Doll, doll body parts. Yeah. She's okay. Like if we're home, she'll de-stuff things. But like she doesn't do any of the stuff she's not supposed to when we're here. It's when we're gone that she's eaten three of my bras, which I am very <laughs> upset about. <laughs> <laughs> Did she pull the wires out? Is that what she's doing? Well, two of them were sports bras, and they were like my favorite ones. One was, eh, it probably needed to be tossed, but it was fine. She's eaten a pair of David's Hey Dudes. She ate a, his like workout shoes, which fortunately they were like Reebok from the outlet, and I called them his old man shoes, so like no one was really upset. <laughs> um, Hair was okay to be eaten. Yeah. yeah. And then were these in the hamper or clean? I'm just curious. The bras? Yeah, like all of the all the clothing was it used um, or? <laughs> I want to say they were clean and they were to be folded. Oh, uh, okay. And normally when we're gonna fold clothes, we lay them out on the bed before we fold them, and we had to like run quickly to get an errand, and she pulled them out. And now every door is closed when we leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> so. Have you considered crating? 
I told David we should start creating her when we leave. And I think he's going to agree, which never in his life would he agree. But he's to the point where, you know, he's like, well, Riley never did this. And last night his mom was like, yeah, but Riley was raised in an apartment. And any time she was outside, she was on a leash. She didn't have the freedom, you know, so she's already eaten through one leash. Yikes. So, you know. Leash training's fun. <laughs> Look at him. Like, you know not to do this. <laughs> Does she do the, like, put her head down and kind of, like, no, like I'm sorry? Like, what? what? <laughs> well, I'm hoping she calms down a little bit once she spayed. Hopefully. Because normally they, they calm a bit. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about that. I understand, but I yeah. feel like it takes part of their personality away. There are certain parts that I'm okay. <laughs> if the digging goes away, <laughs> I'll oh, be Maybe good. that's it. She's trying to dig her future nursery. That's what it is. Okay. If she's digging up bodies, I don't want them. <laughs> Like at one point, David was like, we're cementing the whole backyard and spray painting it green. <laughs> hey, David, I have a I have a production question for you. I'm sorry to stop the moment here. I'm getting an, uh, a notification that your browser is not allowing this to record or save to disk. Is there like a permission setting in the upper? He just froze. I think we lost him. No. Nah. I wonder if he crashed. Nope, oh. he's gone. Wow. That's did how you see, kick somebody out, everybody. Did you see my sign? I can see I can't read it, though. Something, please. Hanging with my gnomies. <laughs> Remember I said gnome earlier. I know. There's no... So I have David's stuff. Like, there's a gnome tree skirt. A gnome tree topper. Are gnomes Christmas themed? Yeah, they can be. Uh-oh, got an image from David. Blue screen of death. Oh my goodness. Oh. We've got to put that in the uh, in the video. I hope that um, everything we just went through actually recorded because that's going to be a really weird recording of just you and me talking to somebody that's not there. That's fine. Uh, let me share this. So I remember to put it in the video. That is David's work laptop. No. What does it say? Your device ran into a problem and needs to restart. What does that say at the bottom? We're just oh. collecting some error info and then we'll restart for you. Thanks, Windows, for ruining a podcast. All right. I'm trying to close my window. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we should... We're at time. I guess we should wrap up. And um, Allison, any last thoughts? Um, I want to stop sharing. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. Gobble, gobble, wobble, wobble. Are you going to do a, a 5K or a walk or a run? No. No turkey We're trot for a, Allison? We're not a running family. Have you ever seen the meme of like when you think you may be annoyed with your partner and then you realize you married into a running family. No. <laughs> I'll have find it and send it to you. Yes, yeah, so I have to I want to see that. I will be doing a turkey trot on Thursday. I will do one in my heart for you. <laughs> but so you can eat more turkey. I know. So the other thing with Thanksgiving, like not that I hate Thanksgiving, it's fine. But I'm just not like a huge like I don't get, have like a heaping plate. I get like some turkey and some stuffing and some mashed potatoes. Plus, Hard drive not installed. Did you see a second picture? Yeah. Oh God. I need to share this one to you. I'm just doing it for the recording. Um, so you're not a big turkey eater. Okay. Well, I mean, I eat turkey, but like I'm not the person at Thanksgiving with like a plate piled high you know what i mean yeah i'm like you i'm not so here i don't think i don't either that's that's pretty bad um yeah oops sharing teams <laughs> stop 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 sharing there we go good thing you're the editor 
Yeah. <laughs> um, we're we're not doing traditional Thanksgiving. We're gonna do like um, ribs and or short ribs and. Ooh, I'm, I'm gonna make some sweet potato casserole. David's doing sweet potato souffle. Souffle. I bought the so I went to Sam's and got the pre-made sweet t- mashed potatoes, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna do the topping on it. They got like some corn flakes, some brown sugar, some walnuts. Yeah. So. Yeah, he does it. It's a casserole, but he calls it souffle. So. Oh my gosh, he's what? back. That was terrifying. <laughs> you know, did you hear right? anything I said before you froze? No. no. You said, you said, I heard you have a production question, and then I was like, oh, and then you said my browser, and then my computer just blew screen of death. I was getting these messages on the application saying that they couldn't record your recording, they couldn't save it to disk, and it's all uploading right now, I can see it, it's, you're 80% uploaded, um, but so we might be okay. The worst thing is we might have to redo this, but um, I'm going to let it finish here. <laughs> <laughs> but now my computer's like freaking out even more. I wonder if it's just something on my side. I have no I idea. Will blame your Ooh. Dell device. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's do this for safety. Let's stop, and I'm gonna stop recording. And um, so everybody say bye. Nice, nice to meet you. Or nice to have you, David. Nice to meet. You. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you, David. <laughs> nice to have you. Great All right, now I'm gonna you. stop. <laughs>